This is Josiah Plays, Son the Sea. We're here at the Empire of Hands, and I'm about to travel to the Wild Wheeled Court and see what I can do there. The guards nod and open the gates for you. There is no welcome. They stare at the ground throughout. Ooh, look, I can do lots of stuff. And there's a nice monkey. A cacophony of Pentecost apes swings across ropes and ceiling beams in a cramped sea of sweat and malice. All are locked in an endless feud for souls and status, with scarce few having much else to call their own. Sounds like a nice place. I've been in worse places. <laughs> uh, visitor in court. This uses something awaits you. Your wanderings bring you to the cramped laboratory of the Imperial Alchemist, wreathed in the smells of honey... Wax and lacquer. The Silent Gallery. While the Emperor sleeps and feasts, the exquisite Seneschal coordinates the Great Exodus. Hmm. The Chandler of Souls. Your rising status in court has inspired assorted parties to inquire about your willingness to... meet. Or I can trade with the Wild Wheeled Court. This is what I want right here. Trading? No, it is not trading. However, should you have gifts of a certain nature, they'll give me some gifts back, or I can leave the court. The rest of the Empire of Hands awaits, as does a much-needed breath of fresh air. Well, let's start with the trading. Start with the trading. The Keeping of Appearances. A small group of powder-faced apes in the red-trimmed robes of court mandarins invites you into a quiet, cushioned room. Drinks and honey cakes are served, and business carefully not discussed. These are very civilized monkeys. After a while, however, the charade gives way to polite expectation. It is unlikely that the Admiralty itself would consider this a mere bending of their rules, but it provides a veneer of respectability that the Mandarins crave. So I could give them souls if I had them. I could give them wine, that's what I'm going to do. I could give them prisoners honey... I could give them red honey, I could give them cinders. Or, with apologies, no gifts today. I wonder what the what I get for prisoners, honey. Because I do have one of those. Alright, let's, let's do the wine thing. The berries of the Empire of Hands make a bitter wine, apologizes the Mandarin. They were always such a treat, the vintages of London, before the unpleasantness. All right, let's give them some wine. I have 40 of them. Gained two status. Loss of wine. Gained coffee beans. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. I just have to do that 39 more times, apparently. A libation is poured. The Empire of Hands does, however, brew a most fine coffee, muses the Mandarin. It looks a little like the kind you would find back home. It smells like it. It tastes utterly indistinguishable. Pure coincidence, he declares, gesturing for more. I really have to click this and this 38 more times. That's pretty awesome. But I'm going to gain a lot of status that way. A lot of status. Gifts of wine. Let's do the trading. Can I? No. Gifts of wine. Let's do the trading. I give you wine. You give me coffee. Alright, we'll get it done. We'll get it done. It's a one for one trade. Ah, oh, status cannot increase past 50, but still, I got my status to 50 that quick. Gifts of wine for gifts of coffee. You like wine, and I like much more expensive coffee. This is taking a minute. Boop, 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 boop. Done. Checking the hold. I can't check the hold right now. All right, do I want to give him some prisoner's honey as well and see what I get in response for it? I don't know. 
Ooh, I can get Violet Ink for Red Honey. Violet Ink is one of the things I need for the for the seven colors for that one big quest to get the colors. Anyway, I'm not sure. Was it seven colors? It was some number of colors. Do I want to do the Prisoner's Honey thing? I don't know. No, with apologies, no gifts today. You do not have anything worthy of such company, or at least that is the lie it feels safest to tell them. The Mandarins bow, stiffly and pointedly. It was, they do not feel the need to say, their pleasure. Alright, let's save again. Just gonna save on 10. And I'm gonna try this honey thing and see what they give me back. This far east, it is so hard to come by, say the Mandarins. Then they sigh as one. Is it so wrong, they ask, to seek a brief escape into dream now and then? Nope, it's not wrong. Here you go. A monkey is introduced with the soul of a poet. Ordinarily, that is not meant quite so literally. His words alone transport you into another world, through a veil of sad tears and out into a reality that feels somewhat warmer. At the Mandarin's nod, he leaves signed copies of his work behind. A gift for one of a land where such stories are prized and properly appreciated. Huh. Gained two romantic literature. All the adventures of the heart are here, in prose, poetry, or pictorial form. Some may be more suitable for private consumption. Note, in London, customs duty is paid on love stories, even illustrated love stories. Alright, that's all the gift doing we're going to do right now. Let's just leave for a second. I want to see my hold. Ah, those do take up hold space. That's unfortunate. I just traded a thing that took one space in my hold for two things, but they may be valuable. And I have my 40 sacks of coffee beans and my 3 centilac. Where are my hunting trophies? Are they down here? Yeah, they are. Okay. At least those don't take up space. Alright, let's go back. Let's go back to the court. Because there's some other things we can do here. We're just going to save again. Let's do the Chandler of Souls. Your rising status in court has inspired associated parties, assorted parties, to inquire about your willingness to meet. Trust is not a courtly virtue. The Chandler will, however, be pleased to act as your intermediary to ensure fair play on both sides of the transaction. Is this people that want to buy my soul? It is. High-souled apes prize quality over quantity, seeking beneficial spiritual alchemy. The Chandler lacks the finesse of devils, but he assures you this is not a problem. Your soul is his concern. Your comfort is not. I sell it to the mayor for 175. With it, he will have the five souls needed to petition for membership of the court. I could sell it to the ambitious page. She will likely not keep it for longer than it takes to trade up. For now, though, it serves her purposes. For 400 echoes. I could sell it to the veiled concubine. She, se she seeks uplifting from the servant classes to the low aristocracy. She can give 850. I can sell it to the monkey baronet. There is something in your eyes he approves of. He wishes to see if he can replicate it in his own polished silver mirror. He'll offer a thousand echoes for my soul. Or I can make it a gift for the Emperor, if it pleases him to accept, of course. This trade is a gamble based on the Emperor's mood. That seems like a terrible idea. All of these seem like a pretty bad idea, though. I don't think I'm going to sell my soul right now. Because I could have serious problems not having a soul later, or whatever. I don't know. I'm just going to hold on to my soul for now. What is the soul of a man? It's not for sale. No sale, not for now. Whether the offers are insufficient or you simply thought twice, you'll be keeping your soul. Should you change your mind, he is here. And what about the silent gallery? While the emperor sleeps in feast, the exquisite seneschal coordinates the great exodus. You are granted permission to enter. 
The silence is a pleasant slap to the flace. To the flace? What the hell is a flace? I don't know. I don't know what a flace is. But the silence is a pleasant slap to the face, sweetly scented with incense. Inside, the exquisite seneschal moves between clusters of mandarins in their yellow and red robes, using her experience to not so much give orders as offer advice on what the emperor would wish. A plan. Supplies for the zeppelin. Need archaeology 15. A plan. Fuel for the zeppelin. Infernal trade agreement, no more than zero. Status, 25. Fuel, no more than 99. Oh, I should check this out. The exquisite Seneschal looks for a trusted agent to establish a relationship with the Iron Republic. Let's try that. A deal with the devils. The exquisite Seneschal provides you with a signed contract in a language it is unlikely any human can read. If you take it to the Iron Republic, they will provide you with hydrogen. It will take several trips to fully supply the Zeppelin, but there will be no charge. That's cool. The Empire of Hands has charged you with arranging deliveries of hydrogen from the Iron Republic. Alright, nice. It's better than giving them my own fuel, because I don't really feel like doing that. You return to the chaos outside. You could live here all your life and never get used to the noise and smell. The prospect is not a tempting one. Alright, then there's one final thing I can do. And that is the visitor in court, which will take my something away to you. So I know I've been saving a lot, but I'm just going to save one more time here. Your wanderings bring you to the cramped laboratory of the Imperial Alchemist, wreathed in the smells of honey, wax, and lacquer. Experiments in souls. He dips them one at a time in a bowl of lacquer, neath snow. They fizzle in the frozen sorrow, something beyond a scream cutting the air. No good, mutters the alchemist, discarding what remains. No good at all. He kicks the rest of the crate. Worthless, all worthless. Well, if he has no need for them. I just got a crate of human souls, yo. Clinking, glowing. Pleading. You can see a little bit of a face there in the icon. It's all for now. It wasn't there something I could do with that? Few Pentecost apes earn the honor of seeing inside this place. Fewer still are happy to see a human here. A mob of monkeys. Just getting around is almost impossible. Three high-souled monkeys fight over which has the most stylish wig. A stampede breaks out when a merchant stall collapses and all descend to take advantage. Two mandarins come to blows over a particularly valuable soul. The screeching chaos is unbearable. You retreat to a quiet corner, or at least as quiet as you can find. Alright. Leaving the court... Back to Port Stanton. If only the monkeys had engines, they would likely have built proper docks. Uh, Alright, I don't think there's anything else I can do here right now. Unless I can give this soul. I can contribute souls to the Zeppelin, but you have to have two of them. And I only have one. Can I do anything again with the um, Adventurous? Vault of the First Emperor, outside the vault. Maybe something is happening now. The delightful adventurous consults papers while her clayman Barnabas and a small crew of variably hard-working monkeys try to force open the doors. Ah, you're here! You, you're here! She calls. Do pick up a crowbar, there's a dear. Bit of elbow grease should do it. Right, on the count of three. Muscles, human and primate alike, strain as the delightful adventurous harries everyone along. Finally, with a crack and a screech of triumph and exhaustion, the doors slide open. Inside is just blackness. There! Now chop chop, everybody! declares the delightful adventurous, striding into the dark with a personal glim lantern. Behind her, her monkeys collapse to the ground, gasping, occasional stolen words and squeals of protest escaping into the air. Archaeology's up to five. 
Whatever the delightful adventurous is looking for, it must be worth a fortune. If you contribute, you will be owed a share. Enter the vault. Through the doors into the depths. The delightful adventurous will not relinquish her glim lantern. You will need foxfire candles to light your way. One crate will suffice for the entire exploration. Or I can leave the vault. Its secrets will have to remain a little longer. I do happen to have one thing of foxfire candles because I bought them just so that I could do stuff like this. So let's go into the vault, shall we? You know what I have to do first, though. I have to save. Enter the vault. Ooh. The antechamber. It's really, really dark in here. I thought maybe now that I'm using my candles, I'd get to see something, but not so much. At the bottom of the stairs is a room with a sealed stone door. In front of that stands a pointedly placed plinth, holding three thin pillars and some stone discs. The delightful adventuress rolls her eyes. A trial of the mind, it appears. How very adorable. It appears that our monkey friend's ancestors have absorbed more than a few souls with a passion for things of the pulp. Oh, well, that should make things interesting. She slaps your shoulder. Do the honors, Capitano. Lost my candles. Archaeology's up to ten. Exploring the vault is up to one. Solve the puzzle. Three poles, stone discs. Oh, please. The Towers of Hanoi puzzle? That little children's game that has been amusing London in recent years? This antechamber must be a more recent addition to the vault than it looks, if even the monkeys have bought into its legend. You roll up your sleeves. This will be easy enough, and apparently it really will be easy, because I have a 100% chance. Fifteen stone discs. Ah, a minor problem suddenly reveals itself. Well, I see that you have this under control, declares the delightful adventurous, heading back upstairs. I leave it in your evidently very capable hands. Archaeology to 11... Towers of Hanoi Moves remaining quality is now 32,767. Well, that is a lot of moves. That is a lot of moves. Continue solving the puzzle. They cannot be serious about this, surely. Okay, we still have 100%. One move at a time. One move. If you keep this up, you should be done just in time to see the sixth city. And now my the number went down by one. It's 32,766 and it went down by one. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Wait, I don't... Ah. If you keep this up, you should be done just in time to see the sixth city. You and the delightful adventurous are not the only treasure hunters in the Empire of Hands. Another may have supplies that you both lack. All right, 32,765. What if I'm just like... Do, 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 do. What if I literally did this, clicked this 32,700 times? Would it actually complete? I think it would, probably. But I'm not going to, for obvious reasons. I need to go talk to the treasure hunter guy. There has to be a better way... You leave the puzzle behind. Someone elsewhere. Reading is really hard right now. Words, what do they mean? Someone elsewhere in the Empire of Hands may be able to help with this. Yes, I know who to go to. So treasure hunt, vault, right? The vault thing is still the same. Visit the camp. Uh, I think, does she have any ideas on that infernal puzzle? The delightful adventuress rolls her eyes. I would say, darling, that if the monkeys are not going to play fair, then there is no reason we should do any different. She taps the table for a moment. It is, after all, not solving that little toy that matters, but getting through the door. Perhaps there is a simpler way. <gasps> he had dynamite. Remember, he had dynamite. I could maybe use dynamite to just blow through the door. Although, using dynamite on some random, like, underground tomb seems like a bad idea, but whatever, whatever. Um... Okay, so we leave here, we go back to the boat, we save. I don't want to lose all that fat uh, 32,000 moves progress I made right there. Then we go to Hearthsake Village where the lost treasure hunter is. 
Then we talk to the lost treasure hunter. This says the same thing as before. I could get candles with supplies. Ah, oh, that'd be nice if I wanted to proceed in there and I needed candles because it was too dark, then I could get, get some from him. Dynamite could be a good idea. Um... Let's get the dynamite. You have a newspaper. At least I won't feel entirely lost when I finally get back home. The trade is complete. The lost treasure hunter scans the latest headlines. Fascinating, he mutters. And should be most absorbent if needs must. Ah, he's going to use it as toilet paper too. Of course he is. I now have three sticks of dynamite, a tool for pragmatic archaeologists. Lost my recent news. My real question is... Do those take up hold space? Because if they don't, that makes me happy. Looks like they do not. That's great. So now, can I go back... Now can I go back and uh, use the dynamite to blow that door open? Anything new on the Ash Isthmus while we're m messing around? Pentecost apes being pissed, that's all. Okay. Back to Fountainhead Island. Back to the vault. Into the vault. The stone columns and their overly generous allocation of discs still await in front of the sealed door. You grudgingly return your attention to the puzzle. I can do it with dynamite. There's more than one way to show your intelligence. Is it a good idea, though? Hold on. Let's talk to her. No, she doesn't have anything new to say. All right. Okay, so let's blow the door open with dynamite, as much of, of a crazy idea as that sounds. Boom! Bits of rubble and clockwork fly. The stonework trembles slightly as if about to collapse, but then settles with just the occasional plink-plink of metal and the tinkle of falling shards and gears of all sizes. Well, that is certainly one solution, declares the delightful adventuress, unplugging her ears. I think, though, darling, I shall be taking the rest of those. Cannot fault your thinking, but we would rather reach the center of this quaint little tomb without ourselves becoming buried in it, would we not? Still, splendid resourcefulness. Splendid. Top marks. Alright, so she's happy enough. Archaeology is now 15, which means I know I can now do that plan supplies thing at the, at the, um, back at the court. I remember that. Press on into the vault. What trials await through the technically a doorway over the melted cogs and fallen rubble? I'm going to need more light, aren't I? A huge maze stretches out before you. The delightful adventuress produces a large ball of yarn. With all due credit to Theseus, she says, nailing one end into the wall. I suspect, however, we shall not have to worry about a minotaur lurking in this particular maze. Come on, such things are hardly a problem for a woman of adventure. This will take but a jiffy. She leads the way with utter confidence, even when it becomes clear she has no idea where she is going. Even when it becomes painfully obvious to all that she is merely turning left at every intersection, confident that eventually this will lead to the exit. The string runs out long before the maze does, yet somehow this does not feel like an insurmountable problem for returning. Exploring the vault is now two. Well, apparently it's not its not making me use up any more candles or anything. Which is good, because I don't have any more. Onwards. This part of the temple looks distinctly more ancient, and more carefully crafted by its architects. A sense of respect and history pervades. Still, uh, nothing but a black screen here, though. Very dark, I guess.
the Hall of Histories. A mosaic floor stands between you and the door. The delightful adventuress catches your arm before you can step onto it. Oh, sweetie, she sighs, pointing at the walls. Little holes run down both of them, just large enough to see the readied crossbow bolts behind. Isn't this wonderful, she says. I have seen many, many tombs, and most just put something big and heavy in front of the door. Bless their hearts for putting all this effort into something nobody was ever supposed to see. Anyway, be a dear. I'll be outside if you need me. She heads back to check on her camp, so I have to deal with this trap while she leaves. Nice. All right. Uh-oh, here we go. It begins. Attempt to read the inscriptions. 28% chance. Everything is a pages challenge, and pages is still my lowest, uh, and I don't have any officers that can raise it. Pages is a fucking problem. It's a problem for me. The language is unrecognizable. Is that a bit of a pictogram? Why is it by the cricket stumps? Uh, no more than two wounds, no more than one frozen drop of red honey, no more than zero. Or I can, oh, oh, I can just try to figure this out trial and error, huh? I can examine the mosaic floor. Nine colored tiles stretch across this corridor. Be careful, choosing wrong may lead to a wound. Three wounds can mean death. If you don't know the correct order... You may be, on, be able to find a safer way past. Let's examine the floor. It's too far to jump. Blast. The monkeys thought of that, at least. And it would be difficult to get a ladder down here. It would be very risky to simply guess, but a solution must be around here somewhere. Or an alternative. So maybe if I could succeed at this pages challenge, it would tell me how to do it. I'm not just going to randomly guess and step on anything. Or maybe if I get a certain item or something, it will help me get past here. I think for now, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to return to the surface. This will require a little more preparation. You leave the vault. The monkeys are already poking and prodding at the completed rooms, crowbarring gems and valuable stonework out for both sale and hoarding. Alright, let's go back to the court let's go to the silent gallery a plan supplies for the zeppelin see i have the 15 archaeology i needed now the exquisite seneschal may have an unpalatable way of gathering supplies but only for a trusted friend that's me apparently a final meal the cannibal pirates of hearthsake island have long been a thorn in the empire's paw with a few little drops of this vial, you could deal with them for good. Their supplies would be very welcome for the voyage. Ooh, a particularly potent poison. And it alliterates as well. Provided by the exquisite Seneschal to kill the cannibal pirates plaguing the Empire of Hands. Oh no. Should I poison the pirates? Ooh, ask for help translating the vault inscriptions. The exquisite Seneschal often finds herself looking to the past for assistance. She may have an idea. Great. A chip of the past. The exquisite Seneschal looks around cautiously and bids you follow her into a small room behind the Emperor's throne. She fishes for a small wooden box and from it produces what looks like a shard of salt, the glimmer of red honey inside. Hey, Noxmoo, how you doing? Good to see ya. What's up, Noxmoo? The memory of an architect, long dead. They were scribes also. This is not like the honey you may know. It is frozen. Saved. Let it melt into your tongue. Should anybody see you, it will be said you stole it. She glares. From the Emperor. That's dangerous. I now have a frozen drop of red honey. I'm good, thanks, Mock Knox. I'm good. Suspended in what feels like a chip of Z salt. The exquisite seneschal of the Emperor of Hands claims it will be useful. Alright, now that I have that... I've got some options. I could... 
I could go and try to poison the cannibals, but I don't know if I should or not. I can try to go back and use this honey thing to solve the puzzle. Oh, it's not even a... Now that I have this, it's not even a, a challenge anymore. It's just a you just do it, I guess. The exquisite seneschal said that this frozen drop of red honey might help. Let's do it. You place the chip under your tongue. It is not the usual rush of red honey, but a slow, fizzling sense as it spreads through your mouth. For a moment, you have the sense of your body being too big, your blood pumping wrong. Memories hang at the edge of consciousness, unclear, faded. As you look at the inscriptions, though, chaos melts into meaning. I now have two... Frozen drops of red honey. I do? I had one and now I have two? Okay. Well, let's read the inscriptions. The ancient carvings shift between complete nonsense and easy readability as the memories wax and wane. Oh boy, here we go. I have a feeling I'm actually going to have to pay attention to this and solve this as a legitimate puzzle. Uh, alright. A slightly dubious retelling of history. A terrible light cast from afar. A sliver of cosmogone in the darkness. Burning cinders ashore the sea of the dead. The apes, who are not yet of the Pentecost, fear them. But their covetous natures will not be denied. Those who hold them burn harder. Yet are cursed with tortured ambition no blood spilling can sate. This is an it is an addictive melancholy. This is the Icterine age. Uncounted times before, he who will be the first emperor is not yet the first emperor. It is he who is first blessed to conquer the blue-clad emissaries from the waters of the dead and drink deep, deep of their stolen life breath by cinderlight. So dawns the Cerulean age. The Pentecost Reach ensorcels the world, shore to shore, and all who are not ape are cast to the dark. The life breaths of emissaries from the waters of the dead have birthed the Empire Eternal in blood and light. All forever bask in the glory of the Amaranth Age. Okay. Right. I, I want to be able to see this again. Let me do a little... Take a little screen cap of that right there, in case I need it. Oh, I can read it again as much as I want. Okay, yellow, red, and blue. Here's what I think. I think Icterine Age is referring to yellow. I think Cerulean Age is referring to blue, and Amaranth Age is referring to red. So maybe I just need to do yellow, blue, red, and that's all I have to do, and that's victory. Let's go ahead, save on 12, and try yellow, blue, red. Yellow tile. A cautious step. Death does not, however, seem to follow. Blue tile. Oh, now there's green, too. Blue tile. Tile creaks, but you remain unpunctured. Sorry, so far I'm right. Red tile should be next. Oh, now there's white. Alright, no, we're sticking with red. History is conquered. With deep relief, you step off the mosaic tile, tile and make a note of the correct sequence. If your mental map is correct, you are near your destination. Okay, so I solved it. I was right. That's great. Delightful archaeology has gone all the way up to 300. Okay. A pit of venomous snakes? Uh-oh. You see them through the door, thousands of them, in a pit crossable only by a thin beam lit by inconsistent neath light through a hole in the roof. It would be no problem for a monkey to cross, but a human... Yeah, that sounds difficult. It is the delightful adventuress's turn to go first. To her credit, she does not try to weasel her way out of it. 
lantern held between her teeth, an adventurous rapier bouncing casually on her hips. She steps confidently onto the thin beam and swiftly crosses foot over foot without so much as a glance down. Your turn. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's only 26% chance. It's a Veil's challenge. What if I were to just... Go ahead and save right now. Save's coming, this. Succeeded on my first try! With 26%! Yay! A terrifying crossing. Every step is treacherous, and your foot almost slips several times before you half collapse, sweat streaming from every pore on the other side. The delightful adventurer seems utterly unconcerned by her own near brush with writhing death. Oh, do pay attention, darling, she sighs, shining her lantern on the snakes. The thousands of snakes. The thousands of venomous snakes. The thousands of dead, dried up snakes. See, this is what happens when one decides to build oneself a snake pit, only to neglect to consider how the poor things will be fed. Seen it a hundred times. Well, perhaps twice. She chuckles. That's a good point. You always have something like a snake pit in some ancient tomb, and the people have to get across there, and it's supposed to be like sealed up for hundreds of years, and the snakes are just in there alive. That's true. The snakes would have starved to death if they were sealed in a thing. Uh, again, the tale of terror. Succeeded, 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 succeeded. That's great. An underground courtyard. Down a flight of steps, the center of the vault. It's getting serious. So close, and yet so far. Yeah, Noxmoo, the secret snake level. Exactly. This is very obviously the oldest part of the temple, around which all else has grown over time. Ancient tapestries hang from walls decorated with portraits of a single ape, clothed in violet and crowned by the sun. He is the first emperor, the hundred-souled founder of the Empire of Hands. His authority reaches across time. Not much to look at, is it? declares the delightful adventuress. They say they buried the old bugger with all of them, a hundred of the finest souls. A hecatomb, if you will. She laughs for a moment at a joke only she and perhaps three others in the Neath would appreciate. Mark her respect by the primates, you know, to say no one else could do half as much with them. Her eyes glint. Let's do something about that. All right. The final door. It's the final door. Or do 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 do. All right, now. This tribute to the Empire's first and greatest has been constructed over generations by monkeys working with stolen ideas of what an ancient tomb should be. The final door. Do 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 do. Huge, imposing, impassable. Is there a way through it? A dusty bowl of glassy red chips. It stands on a plinth in the middle of the room. Its contents seemingly untouched by the monkeys who have tried getting through the door. What is that all about? It's time to save again. Well, let's check out the door. There is no obvious method. There is no handle. And though there is a gap that a crowbar could fit through, the door seems too thick to get any leverage. Scratch marks around the side suggest that more than a few monkeys have tried. Around it are gaping holes where gemstones were once seated. You press a hand to the door, holding a candle to the cracks. Stone. Very thick. Even dynamite is unlikely to make much of a dent without bringing the whole temple down around you. There must be a way to open it, though. Why would anyone bother building a door that they never expected anyone to be able to get through? That's a good point. A dusty... maybe it's a decorative door. <laughs> a dusty bowl of glassy red chips. Let's see what this is all about. You take a chip. A drop of red honey hangs in the middle, bleeding out through cracks in the salt. Red honey contains memories. Why would the chips be here? Isn't red honey really valuable too? Could I just take this bowl full of red honey and go sell it for like thousands of echoes? Oh, uh, do I want to consume the red honey chip? 
It's frozen memories, glint in the candlelight. Yeah, fucking gotta YOLO this shit. A test of understanding. The memories are diluted, largely unspecific, but that is not important. What this red honey carries is something far deeper, a connection of souls across centuries, the birth of an empire in which even the lowest could be uplifted, and sparks of greatness itself passed on. Magnified, never lost with the passing of flesh. This was the dream of the first emperor, one of unity and evolution, transcendence and glory. His memory was placed here that all could see their true destiny purpose. Instead, it is as if the Emperor himself is receiving a glimpse of the Empire his dream became. Uh-oh. His tears run uncontrollably down your cheeks. Yeah, the Empire didn't really work out the way you were hoping for, <laughs> Emperor. Pretty much just a bunch of monkeying around taking place. Apparently I can open the tomb now. Which... Apparently costs a memory of distant shores, a Z story, and a tale of terror. Open the Emperor's Tomb. The memory fades, but something remains. Only one who is as worldly wise as the first Emperor hoped his people would be can open this door. Let's do it. It seems like such a simple thing now. It is slightly more complicated than simply pushing the door open, but only a little. I gained a secret! Yay! That was worth it for the three story types. The lost treasure has been found. Now for the easy bit. The burial chamber. The first emperor's bones lie in state, surrounded by souls in spheres of blue, green, and silver. The delightful adventuress applauds politely. Ah, oh, very, very fine work, she declares, taking a moment to admire the architecture before turning her attention to the souls. Hmm. Now, unless my eyes deceive me, there are not a hundred. Not even close. Blasted legends in their exaggeration. This will complicate matters. Oh well, Barnabas, do be a deer and gather those up. Ah, and as for you, she adds, drawing a rapier that glistens at the end, kindly remain where you are. She's double-crossing me? She's turning on me. She's gonna cross me out. Is that what this is? No, that's not acceptable. After I solved all that shit for you. Ooh. Attack the Delightful Adventurous with a 31% chance. This entirely unexpected betrayal will not stand, or I can obey her. You've done everything else, she asked. Oh, no. 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 We're saving, and we're, we're gonna fuck it. No. This will not stand. I don't know if I succeeded or not. A blade with a sting. The delightful adventurous tuts. I would not, she warns. There is just a tiny but efficacious little drop of cantigaster venom on the tip, purchased at considerable expense for just this kind of eventuality. Oh, don't sulk, she adds. When I tell this story, your death will be glorious. Your crew especially will be most moved on our journey home. All the Neath will know of your great sacrifice, though I may change your name to something that rolls better off the tongue. Something with a little more pep. I'm sure you understand. I don't understand. The clay man finishes gathering the souls. This could be going better. A delightful scheme. Such simple things, aren't they? Says the delightful adventurous. Goodness only knows what the devils do with them. But opportunity is opportunity, is it not? My friends in the Iron Republic were quite happy to agree safe passage to and from their homeland in exchange for this legacy. They will have to be satisfied, I suppose. Their lips turn up a smug smile. And next time, I bid the accursed Leonardo, Leonara Fortescue go to hell? Well, I shall be able to recommend the bloody sights. Nice. I see what you did there. I'm not amused by this. A calculated risk. With the bag over her shoulder, she's going to be slower. You just have to avoid that poison sword. Or do nothing and form a plan later. The monkeys built this tomb by copying stories. The stories always have a way out. I'm going to take the calculated risk. And a loyal clay man, of course. You barely get close before Barnabas' arms close around yours. The delightful adventurous nods appreciatively. Well, that's that then, she says, backing out of the vault. 
Oh, except for one minor detail. Barnabas, I thank you for your loyalty and fine service. As a final courtesy, please do the honors and ensure our friend here remains buried. It is a fine resting place, hmm? Such a shame it will be wasted on just one ape. The clay man lurches towards her as she produces one of your confiscated sticks of dynamite, lights it, and drops it in the corridor. Before either of you get close, it explodes in a cloud of dirt and rubble that seals the exit. Barnabas has no face. He does, however, most definitely have expressions. The one he wears now is chilling, so she just betrayed her clay man bodyguard as well as me. Maybe he will help dig me out of here. And then we can get our, our joint revenge. Attempt to dig a way out. She won't get away with this. A helping hand. Barnabas immediately joins you in the excavation. Were he a regular clay man, he would likely be obeying his last order right now and ending your life for his mistress. Being unfinished, however, he is no mere golem. In her arrogance, the delightful adventuress appears to have forgotten that loyalty is a two-way street. Oh, this is like Lone Wolf after 16 days of being entombed. Yeah, Noxmu. I don't think uh, my character in this game can survive 16 days without water, though, unlike Lone Wolf. She is not a Kai Grandmaster. Even with both of you digging, though, it will take far too long to clear the rubble. If the delightful adventuress gets back to your ship with the legacy, she will no doubt persuade the crew to leave without you. Okay, leaving without me is not a fucking option. What do I do? I search for a way out? I could use my flare? Oh, the monkey foundling to the rescue! I could do the red honey thing, or I could just dig with my hands like a chump. No, the monkey foundling! She's gonna help me! From above comes a familiar mischievous cry. Yes, help me out, monkey foundling. She slides down a rope into the vault. Hello, she calls, hanging upside down by your face and grinning. The entire empire of hands is her playground, and this temple is no exception. She heard the bang of the dynamite all the way on the ash isthmus and came over to see what it was. Now she sees it's a friend. Helping! Grins the monkey foundling, letting you climb up her rope. Barnabas remains behind. Too heavy. He continues to dig his way out, rock by rock. Well, it doesn't matter how long it takes him to dig out, because he doesn't have to eat or drink or breathe. So he could spend, like, you know, a year digging out, and it won't do him any harm. A delightful reunion. It appears the delightful adventuress is having problems of her own by the rowboats. Yeah, delightful reunion time! Remember me? Surprise, motherfucker! A double betrayal. Whatever the once flea-ridden mayor of Port Stanton took from the delightful adventuress's soul, it evidently came with her loose grip on ethics. He suspected she would try to sneak away without giving him his cut. He was not wrong. Unfortunately for her, he has a small squad of monkeys at his disposal. Unfortunately for him, she has both her rapier and one last stick of dynamite for mutually assured unpleasantness. Well, says the delightful adventuress, seeing you approach, this is an irritating stalemate. I can team up with the delightful adventuress with her poisoned rapier and your wits. You can take out these uppity apes. Not just no, but hell no. I'm not teaming up with her after she crossed me out once. I can propose a fair deal, split the souls three ways, and everyone can be happy. Uh, also, no. Uh-uh. I don't want everyone to be happy. I want everyone except the adventurous to be happy. I want the adventurous to weep bitter tears. Team up with the mayor. Even if you defeat him, there could be an army of his kind between you and your ship. Teaming up with the mayor, it's not even a, it's not even a choice. Of course, we're teaming up with the mayor. You're going down, adventuress. Maybe I'll save, though. <laughs> okay. The delightful adventurous snarls. Species traitor! She spits, lowering the rapier. Even she acknowledges that now she is outmatched. But then comes a rumbling sound from the jungle. She glances over her shoulder and back with a sudden look of endless smugness as Barnabas slowly trudges towards her from the vault. He got out already? 
They were like, oh, it'll take way too long to dig yourself out, and he's already dug himself out? Like, I could have just waited. It literally took him, like, two minutes more than it took me <laughs> to get out and get here. Splendid, she declares. Barnabas, do please deal with this smelly animal. And also the monkey. I see what she did there, and I don't appreciate it. I'm not a smelly animal. Well, okay, maybe I am, but still. Smelly animals have feelings, lady. Okay, I don't think Barnabas is on her side anymore, though. I think when she left him to be buried underneath there in the vault forever, that he's no longer going to do her bidding. That's what I'm thinking. Let's find out. Triumph of the Delightful Adventurous. Barnabas's clay muscles seem to swell as he lumbers forward, silent but purposeful. An unfinished man of clay. Clay men are obedient. Clay men are loyal. Clay men are reliable. Unfinished clay men can be all of these things too. They can, however, be them by choice rather than nature. They can also hold grudges extremely well. The delightful adventurous shrieks in fury as Barnabas effortlessly picks her up. Effortly? Effortly. That's not a word. As Barnabas effortlessly... I still can't say it right. As Barnabas effortlessly... Suddenly, for some reason, effortlessly is a really hard word to say. As Barnabas effortlessly... <laughs> what? What's going on here? I suddenly can't say this word. The delightful adventurous shrieks in fury. The delightful adventurous shrieks in fury as Barnabas effortlessly picks her up, dangling her upside down by one leg. The obscenities are muffled by her skirts falling over her mouth, but the gist is quite clear. Well then, says the mayor, carefully eyeing up the clay giant's spare arm. Should we talk deals now, perhaps? Effortfully speaking the sentence, right, Knox? For real. Way too much effort. That's what makes it ironic. I can't say the word effortlessly, effortlessly. That's, that's awesome. That's actually really funny. Um... Lost Trevor has been... Treasure has been found now for the easy bit. Uh, split the legacy three ways. You, the mayor, and Barnabas. That seems reasonable. Or donate the legacy to the Zeppelin. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I said. It's not a bad idea. And I only have 31% on this. I'm going to donate the legacy to the Zeppelin. I'm going to help him out. This will completely fulfill its requirement for souls. The mayor keeps the remainder to do with as he chooses. You receive the payment from the Wild Wheeled Court. Yes, let's do that. The mayor agrees. Of course he does. The boost to his courtly profile will be tremendous. The deal is struck. Oh, sir, we will take that one adds the mayor, pointing at the delightful adventurous, trying to sneak away our emperor's legacy? Tisk. Oh, do not worry. The punishment is not severe. We approve of the avarice. Still, he grins, we will teach her a little lesson, yes? Then banish in shame. A gift to you from the empire. Delightful archaeology is now 75. Status can increase beyond 50. The Zeppelin Souls is now 100, so I don't have to worry about the Souls part of the Zeppelin at all anymore. It's done. Oh, punish the delightful adventurous. Let Barnabas decide her fate. Or refuse. I'll let Barnabas decide her fate. Yeah, Barnabas, you're cool. Ha make the decision yourself. Barnabas nods, ignoring the angry protest. If he just starts, like, ripping her arms off now, that would be amazing. He follows the monkeys into the woods towards their boat, still carrying a thrashing, delightful adventurous. He will not allow her to come to any real harm, but appears to concur that a little humility may be in order. But that, that is their business. Yours now lies elsewhere. So many stories on the Empire of Hands, man. We've been here forever reading stories. This is like Pigmoat Isle. Now 99. I got 99 problems, but Delightful Adventurous ain't one.
All right, so. Whew, that part is done. Pretty cool. Now what? Now what? Now what? Now what? Let's go back to the court. The guards salute as you approach the gates. You're making waves, it seems. The good kind. Um. Oh, the delightful adventuress is here now. She stands fuming, her head and hands locked tight in a pillory near the center of the palace. She deserves it. She glares as you approach. Do not even think about it, darling. She spits. When I return to London, there shall be a reckoning. My friends in the Admiralty will not stand for this. Mark my... Oh, look. A monkey selling rotten vegetables. Yes! Oh, yes. Barnabas stoically stands by his seething mistress, ensuring the monkeys do not take their fun too far. His bruised loyalty does not, however, stretch to interfering with the opportunistic monkey selling ammunition. Do I want to buy a tomato? Cost ten echoes. Heavy and squishy in just the right stages of rot. Juices drip down your hand as you squeeze its soft skin. I've got a shitty chance to succeed, though. I'm not going to spend ten echoes just to miss with a tomato and look like a chump. I'm going to take the high road. Decline the opportunity. That is a revenge for monkeys. You are better than that. Or more fiscally responsible, at least. You leave the delightful adventuress to her fate. It is doubtful that she will be here for long. Theft is not a huge crime to the monkeys, particularly when they got their share anyway. They will most likely free her as soon as her outrage ceases amusing them. <laughs> of course, this far east, she will be waiting a long time for another ship to take her back to fallen London. Guess she sure as hell ain't riding back on my ship. Alright, we're gonna do some more stuff here, then proceed with our trade route in our next episode. That is gonna do it for this one. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Sunless Sea.